Want to learn how to design your own urban homestead? In this 10-part series, we're going to tell you all about the eco-transformation of our home in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Hi, my name is Rob Avis and I'm the co-founder of Verge Permaculture here in Calgary, Alberta. Today I'm going to talk to you about what we've been working on for the last five years here in Calgary, Alberta. We've been slowly retrofitting a 1970 bungalow into probably one of the greenest retrofit homes in Calgary. We partnered up with my mother-in-law and uh, we started retrofitting her 1970s bungalow here in Calgary. And every year we've opened our house up, people have come through and op they're absolutely amazed at number one, how much food we grow, uh, number two, how efficient our house is now after we've retrofitted it, um, and how much community we've built doing it. <clears throat> it's been an absolutely amazing journey uh, changing this one house, which has ended up creating this movement all throughout southern Alberta. So I'm going to take you through our retrofit and show you some of the key features that we've we've changed on this house and how it's changed our relationship to the house and also to the property and the city itself. In this first slide, we've got two contrasting photos, both of the exact same house. So on the left hand side, we've got our vinyl clad 1970s bungalow with about R8 insulation, so not very much insulation in it, and a front lawn. And on the right hand side, we've got this retrofitted house which has about uh, an R value of 30 in the wall, food forest in the front and more food than we can consume during the summertime. And so I'm going to take you through the process that we went through to change this poorly designed, poorly built 1970s bungalow into this eco home which is super comfortable to live in and provides a ton of our food for about six months of the year. Central to life on this planet is water. A lot of us have watched our cities grow exponentially over the last 10 years. And one of the things that you notice when you look at how we go about expanding our cities is that the first thing that happens is a new piece of land gets annexed by the city. Then civil engineers come in and they do design on this piece of land. And what the civil engineers are doing is they're looking at how water flows from source to sink. And they take that information back, it's usually a topographical map, and they'll look at all of those interactions on that site. And what they end up doing is designing out how they're going to manage that water. And when I say manage, what I usually mean is they're going to take that water from source to sink faster than it's currently moving right now. And so they concentrate and dispose of water. And the first thing that, that happens with regards to the construction is they'll come in with these massive scrapers and they scrape off all the topsoil, sell it to the highest bidder, and then they'll actually terraform the landscape so that it concentrates and disposes of water. Now if water is central to life and our main design criteria for these landscapes is to concentrate and dispose of the water, then we're not actually designing landscapes that are biophilic, that are designed around life, that are designed around biology, and, and therefore they're not what we would refer to as sustainable human habitat. Now in permaculture what we do is we look at water first and we say how is water moving through this landscape? And then we look at a forest as an example and say well most ecologies like forests actually capture that water, slow it down and sink it into the ground which is the exact opposite of the, of the way that we manage water in the landscape. So when we're looking at a new build of a house, of a subdivision, of a city, or even a retrofit of an existing house, subdivision, or a city, we want to understand those water flows. Um, in, a, in a new build, we want to understand how they're moving through the landscape so that we can pacify them and keep them in the land as, much, as long as possible. And in a retrofit, we want to understand the exact same things, how that water is moving through that landscape and how we're going to slow it down and keep it on the landscape as long as possible, which is usually the exact opposite thing that has happened up till there. 